What is going on ladies and gentlemen, this is Stardust here, welcome to a new Marvel's Avengers video. Now, Brian Wagner, a system designer on Marvel's Avengers, was on the Excelsior podcast with Doomkiller HD and Bloody Reckless, and I did the liberty of going through that podcast and writing it out. Now, please understand that these things that I've wrote here aren't exact word for word, but I definitely tried to get as close to that as humanly possible, right? So anyway, the uh, question for the first one was, were shipments already being worked on when you arrived at CD? And if not, what was the system for the cosmetic rework that he replaced? The answer was, shipments were my design. This is obviously Brian. I don't know what the plan was for the cosmetic rework before I arrived. Uh, Brian was essentially told the old system wasn't very rewarding and was very RNG based. You didn't have a direct path besides the limiting options in the vendor, so they wanted to implement a system you can engage with to get cosmetics via gameplay. Brian then designed the system of what he was told. Uh, what's the biggest misconception players have about developing games, Avengers specific or in general, your choice? Games do not make more money than people think they do, or if they know how much a game makes, that you assume it goes to executives or right back into the game. Neither are true. Games are cutthroat. Any way you can help generate revenue, especially a service game where you have the initial sales of the game, the box sales of the game, the ongoing development costs for developing the content for the live service aspects of the game, which are not small, games that are wanting to engage people long term are a very difficult thing to not live outside of your means. The content that you're building and the pace you're doing it match the money that you're making. Um, again, that is a lot of, uh, developer, you know, jargon that I don't truly understand, but, you know, it was still, uh, something that was answered, so it goes here. Is a joining progress feature possible? Yes, anything's possible. If you think of patrols, having a way for people to come in and out without people having to load in and such, it's not a linear piece of content. You would think that joining progress for something like patrol would be important. So, that to me kind of indicates that, uh, joining progress is something for patrol mode. Um, which, you know, again, like, I, I, I hope that that happens soon. I believe that plans probably changed. I believe Patrol was probably supposed to release without joining progress, but then they changed their mind. At least, uh, that's a conspiracy theory on my part. Uh, when loading for the missions in the chapters, would they ever consider the characters having a little random banter instead of loading silence? It may be a no, but just a thought. The answer was, I don't know, because nine times out of ten, those loading screens at those periods are for loading and trying to do other things while loading can be difficult. And it's not just doing something while loading while loading is difficult. We're loading into a new area, sometimes we play cinematics, sometimes you can skip through, and sometimes you can't depending on your console. There is a lot of different aspects on the engineering side we have to think of. It's sometimes too complex, and editing a layer of wanting to do crazy networking stuff and trying to add a layer of dialogue. Sometimes a loading screen has to just be a loading screen. Now, I want to apologize really quickly because I was listening to this and just trying to type it out, even with the ums and all. So some of it may not make all the sense in the world, but the idea is there, right? But definitely go into the um, go into the uh, my description and watch it yourself if any of this is confusing for you guys, right? Uh, because, I mean, even when I was typing, it was quite complicated. So, Brian, is there any chance of having heavily repeated uh, repeatable activity with variation like a Diablo Greater Rift? Brian says there's a chance. Always a chance, right? What's that chance? I don't know. We'd have to have a really good design and we'd believe people would want to engage in. I don't think that would work for us. Maybe a variation. I'd have to consider the motivating factor. We don't want to be copycats and steal stuff for the sake of stealing it. Brian then also discusses that certain things work for certain games and not always ours. Obviously ours being Avengers, right? Can you walk us through the process of putting together a roadmap for this game so the average player has a better understanding of the challenges? Now, Brian... He went into detail, right? So even though I've wrote this here, some of it may not make sense, but I, I'm going to do the best I can. Yes, I can. Putting together a roadmap is one of the most difficult processes of any game because you have to understand a lot of different aspects of your product at once and plan for the future in a very volatile landscape. Something new can come into a game landscape and disrupt everything. Some new game can come out with a new hook and everyone's going to scramble to do it. And if you're stuck on your roadmap and try and not try and stay relevant, you could be in a real rough spot real quick. So what we're looking at right now and why the roadmap is taking time is that 
in the past we put our roadmaps, we didn't have a good idea of what Finnish looked like back then. Uh, if we took the cloning labs that was built a long time ago and shipped it now, it would not go over well with players. We've learned a lot since then with the raid and Omega level threat. This doesn't account for that. It would be like putting in content that we pulled out of the past. As we're looking at the piece of content that we have, we have to make sure it represents what we've learned. It means it will take longer to get out and we want to do other things to fit in our narrative with better mechanics. That means we've got to go back and got to look. The development team size and shape composition has changed from launch and what do we need to do to build the type of content we want to do? Take content from the past and improve it to our standard now. Who do we need on our team? More designers, cinematic people, etc. It's a very difficult balance to have and I want to get the team excited for what we're building. Fair enough. Now this is the next thing. This is about the next patch and he says regions are going to have level bands now. So if you're power level 1 to 25, Eastern Seaboard is the place for you. Nick Fury will say, okay, we have issues there. It's not a super handholdy thing. He says go to the Eastern Seaboard and you have an objective that says complete X amount of war zones there. It incentivizes going through the regions rather than just here's the map. It may not be perfect, but we use that data to improve. And even 2.4, I'll give this little teaser, it's about making our reoccurring events more rewarding. We're looking at making our reoccurring two-week events more consistent. Some of them give exotics for every hero over 120 when you complete the meta objective, or just the one from that mission chain, which is super feel bad. So we want to make that consistent across the board. Giving reason to people who have done these events many, many times, units will be a big part of that. And reward motivation will be a big part of that too. And then Brian says, what does a post Kree invasion in Avengers look like? I know the team is praying for the Kree, but what does a post aim assuming Monarch is dealt with for good and Kree invasion does come and however that works out, works out. What does a post Kree raid, he said raid, okay, Avengers look like? What do we want to do to set that stuff up now? Pretty cool names came out of that conversation too. Doom obviously asked and got rejected. He did say Cree Raid. Now, I don't know, guys, you know what I mean? But we've heard some things about Cree Raids in the past. So either take that with a grain of salt or take that with some juicy spice because, my friends, I think that's kind of guaranteed. So there you go. Um, Obviously... Uh, it's a it's a lot of dancing around certain questions, but I do think the heart was there, and I definitely think it was a really good listen. Um, obviously my little write up, my little panic write up, is uh, is a good you know is is a good way to sort of show what was being said. But obviously, if you want to watch the full thing, then it will be just down in the description below, right? So thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in a bit. Peace.